do right. God, I pray, Lord, that your power come upon this service here tonight. I pray you'd bless us, Lord, as we meet together. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd bless every single uh, word that's spoken, everything that's done. Have your way here this evening, dear God. Move on us, Lord, we pray. Have your way in our hearts and lives. Lord, Lord God, I pray that you'd bless... Uh, uh, Camp, camp meeting, Lord, Thursday night, Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Bless all the preachers. Bless all the singers. Bless everybody that's coming, Lord. I pray that you'd get them all here safely. I pray for those that will be watching from home and online that you'd bless them. God, I pray that old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival may come. Oh, God. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please. Lord, bless everything that's said or done here. Lord, as we meet here uh, this weekend to pray and work, I pray, God, your will will be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being good to us. We pray now that you bless everything that's said or done here tonight. Get glory and honor to yourself. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. Get glory here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake we ask him. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's just all stand and everybody turn around and be friendly to everybody. Can we do that? Everybody stand. Turn around and be friendly. F fellowship there a little bit.
about that, y'all. Let's remain standing for offering. Amen. Let's remain standing. Come on, ushers. Sorry about that, people at home. I thought you figured you thought that fellowship time would never get over with. But they, well, I kept getting stopped and stopped and stopped and stopped. All right. We got a mob of teenagers here tonight. So look at all of them, Yonder. Look at all that. Y'all, you ought to know every one of them. All you people learn to know every one of them. If you can't visit them, at least you can talk to them, be good to them. Amen. All right. Uh, I've got some, some money here. Somebody handed me there a minute to go. Appreciate everybody that helped get that bus. For It's sitting out there. Looks great. And should have a tag on it by tomorrow. We also uh, have a, a special offering uh, tonight from uh, RF Construction. I want to mention that down in Lincolnton. It's a paint on Paint Shop Road, in Lincolnton. And I, I mentioned that for them tonight. Uh, the owner, I guess that's the owner, uh, sent it to us. We thank the Lord for that. And uh, we, we want to help on the bus and other special offerings too. So uh, we also another, got another very special offer. I'll tell you about it later uh, the other day. And But thank the Lord for supplying the needs of Shining Light Baptist Church. He always has. And I've always believed, I've always believed that if you'll do what God wants you to do, the Lord will take care of you. And you don't have to hook and crook to do it. Uh, you just obey God. He'll take care of you. And so tonight, uh, we're glad that all of you are here. Uh, we got a lot of folks that are not here because of sickness. One thing that I forgot to mention, Miss Desi's son, that thought that he had a heart attack, but it, it couldn't find out they got it stopped before it actually was a heart attack. And he's been in the hospital until yesterday. So continue to pray for, for, uh, uh, them and all the others you're visiting here with us tonight and i don't know you we're really glad that you're here make yourself at home we got a lot of teenagers here bus this young lady right over here is from vermont y'all can you remember that with dax over there raise your hand there young lady all the way from vermont that's not even in the united states not like a foreign country or something uh, so y'all be sure and speak to her and uh peyton right and uh, so don't forget that and let's be friendly, okay? All right, let's bow our heads and uh, give to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the good offering, Lord, time that we can have tonight. Thank you for these special offerings that you've sent our way. And I pray that every penny of it will be used for the glory of God. Thank you, Lord, for people that are sending money and that we're helping Brother Ronnie and them up in the mountains working. Lord, I pray that you bless them, watch over them. Have your way in our hearts tonight, God. Do what ought to be done in every life. Bless this money. Multiply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Right quick now, um, before I forget it, you only have two more days to re register to vote, I think. So if you don't get registered by the 11th, uh, you, don't, you don't get to vote. So you need to go do that. If you're old enough, of course, you know, we could do like some people. And uh, my mama could vote, and she died in 2011. Uh, but uh, that, we're not going to do that, but that's the way folks are doing. Uh, they found 700,000 700,000 people that voted in North Carolina that were not legal to vote and voted. Some of them dead, some of them two or three times. And so if you're, if you're 18, you need to get registered to vote um, by Friday latest, okay? All right. Okay, now here's what we're going to do tonight. Teenagers will be staying in here. The uh, kids will be going to kids' class. So hold your breath now. Are you on the mark? It's easy now. All right, go ahead. Little kids, we're going to go to class now. Go ahead.
Okay, now, before we get in our Bibles, and you can be getting your Bibles ready to Matthew 17, Matthew chapter 17, uh, we're going to need some help Friday evening. I know Friday is a day that everybody likes to loafer, but this will save you some money. Uh, down just a tad, brother. Uh, we're going to need some help Friday evening. Uh, we're going to clean the, the new house. That means it's got to be done Mark. So uh, all you that are working on jobs over there, we're going to try to have it done tomorrow and clean it Friday. And, and so I'm going to need some help. All you young guys and stuff, we're going to need a help. We're going to need a truck because uh, we're going to move the, some beds out of the double wide end of that. We got a whole group of people staying in there next uh, week for camp meeting, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, Brother Hammond and his group, there's about a 10 or 10 of his group flying from Missouri to Charlotte. Uh, DJ's going to pick them up Wednesday morning. Uh, we also have uh, evangelist Kevin Mann is going to be with us the whole time. He's the guy that wrote that book on the law of first mention. About, about that thing goes through the whole Bible on that first mention stuff. And uh, he now actually has a Bible printed now, a special edition of King James Bible that goes through the first mention all the way through it. So he'll be here and he'll have those Bibles. Wouldn't be a great gift uh, for Christmas or for your own personal use. I, me personally, I absolutely love that study of first mention. It's fascinating. Like, uh, you know when the first time sinner is mentioned in the Bible? The first time the word sinner is mentioned in the Bible is Genesis 13, 13. He got something. 13, 13. And it's talking about Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities that God burned to the ground. And that's something that's not an accident. That is not an accident. The first time the word love is mentioned in the Bible. You know, everybody knows, I'm in love, I'm in love. I'm in love. They, they, have, they, they mean, I'm full of the devil and I want you to please me. That's what that means in, in the world today. That's what that means. Love is, here's, you know what the first time love, love is mentioned in the Bible? Genesis 22, when Abraham took his son, and he's going to kill him, offer his son as a sacrifice to God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. First time. There's something to that, people. There's something to it. It can't all be coincident. Now, if you have a modern version of the Bible, it don't work like that. As a matter of fact, the word sodomite is not even in the NIV. None. That ought to tell you something. And so, uh, he'll be here with us. And then Brother Frankie, Barry Spears, Brother Ronnie and them, they're still up in the mountains working, I guess, still up yonder somewhere. I hadn't heard from them today. Uh, but uh, they're working in Minneapolis and Newland and up in there cutting trees, stuff like that. And I praise the Lord for all the, uh, the money, the pe money, people sending us money. I'm, we're sending it to them uh, where they're needing it the worst. Because there's churches, let's face it, there's churches all over this part of the country that are sitting with stuff packed up to here they can't get rid of water and, and all kind of stuff just trying to give it away. And that's a wonderful, but let's, we're putting it where it really needed the worst. And I think Brother Mike's on a mission Friday, right, did you say? Up to Spruce Pine, going to take some stuff. Thank the Lord for that and all those that have been. So my preacher friends that text me and say, what can I do? I say, you send us money and I'll send it to Brother Ronnie. And them that's up there, we got about five men missing two weeks of work. And so I'm sure... You know, they're going on their own expense, so I'm sure they could use it. Okay? Um, so, Friday evening. Oh, let's say, let's say uh, five-ish, 5.30. Uh, you say, well, I always go out and eat on Friday night. I got a better idea. Uh, and it'll help you. Uh, come on out and help us a little while. Clean up, and you'll save money. You will save money. I wouldn't, I'd hate to know some of y'all's restaurant bill. I'd hate to know it. I'd hate to know it. Uh, honest to goodness, I'd probably fall over if I knew your restaurant bill. Hey, people spend more money on, on restaurants than they do get to the Lord. And uh, I don't, I'll tell you that. But um, anyway, uh, Friday evening, and then Saturday night's our prayer meeting. We're having a special prayer meeting Saturday night, 7 o'clock, for the count meeting. All right, everybody got all that? Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Now, I'm going to use this scripture you hear me use all the time. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit different than normal. Uh, I'm going to talk about why, what kind of camp meeting that we need to have here at Shining Light Baptist Church. What kind of camp meeting? 
uh, Matthew 17, 21, Jesus said, How be it, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Don't get worried. I'm not going to talk about fasting much, but I do think you should. And I hope everybody's picked a day and, and am and are and will. So tonight, I'd just like to take just a few minutes and talk about the kind of camp meeting that we really need to have. Somebody must have put WD-40 on my neck. Uh, it's not squeaking. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's, let's look at it tonight. Uh, first of all, I'd like for us to have a camp meeting that straightens, fixed, that straightens out our head. That straightens out our head. You know, if you're not careful, living in the world, you know, you turn on TV, you got YouTube, you got TikTok, you got Instagram, you got all that. it'll make you mighty dumb. I mean, the more you watch it, the dumber you get. Because you start thinking, you start thinking off track. And it, does it not amaze you how, I hate to say this, but how dumb people are nowadays? Not that I'm a genius. Somebody sent us a letter the other day and they said, uh, Brother Danny, you're brilliant. And I thought, I didn't know I was brilliant. I always thought I was just an overhead. I, I, what about that? I'm brilliant and didn't know it. <laughs> if, but if a person thinks they are, they ain't. That's right. That's right. If a person thinks they're a smart person, they're not. They're dumb. Uh, he, he that thinketh he standeth, you know, he ain't going to fall. But anyway, that, some of the dumbest people. I, well, y'all, on that matter of abortion, I, I think Brother Derek hit on it Sunday morning. And, and I can't understand how come people can't understand when a woman stands up and says, well, my body, my choice. I don't even, what, duh. I mean, there's pumpkins going to be in here next week. That's what that means. When somebody says, my body, my choice, I'm going to say, do you know it's going to be cold tomorrow morning? It makes the same amount of sense. That has nothing to do with abortion. Nothing. We ain't talking about your body. Duh. We're talking about the baby. Now look at here, people. If that if that's a baby, it's wrong to kill it. If it's not, help yourself. So the whole question is: Is it a person? Is it a human being? If it is, it's wrong to kill it, no matter how it got there. That's right. This whole election is going to be decided by a bunch of people in America who want to. Commit adultery and fornication all they want to and not face no responsibility for it. That's what this whole election's about. The whole thing's hinging on that. That that scares me. We got 4,500 a day being killed in this country. You know, if a baby is is, is nine a woman nine months pregnant, she has a baby, it's kicking, it's got its own personality, it's got its own brain, it's got its own genes, it's got its own DNA. Before it's born. It don't suddenly turn into a human being when they lay it down on the table. Right? So the question is, you say, well, how do we know? The Bible. Same way we know everything else. The Bible said the babe leaped in his mother's womb. And God named Jeremiah before he was born and called him to preach. And jo God named John the Baptist when he was in his mother's womb and called him to preach. I know that's not popular, and I know it's, but we need to kind of count me and make people think straight. You ever read these stories about these dumb crooks? You know, you see these, sometimes they have, I, 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 they used to, I don't know if they had on TV or not, but I've read a few places. Um, uh, there's a guy, there's a guy not long ago, took a baseball bat and went into a gun store and was going to rob it. Okay, let's think here for a second. I don't think you rob a gun store with a baseball bat. I figure the owner has probably got one. I mean, uh, you know, you know that shows you how how dumb people are. Did you know I had a clock, a, a real clock like this? You know the numbers on it. And there's some teenagers over there, and they couldn't even tell what time it is. They don't know. They have to look at one like that right there and say seven thirty. <laughs> they can't tell time. And if they okay, can't GPS, look, I grew up without GPS. I can pretty well get myself anywhere without it now. And now, there's half these people with kids in here couldn't get home tonight if, if they if they was by themselves without that phone. It's getting dumber and dumber and dumber. Um, uh, they said um, one guy, he's all high, and he'd been taking a bunch of Valium and 
and vodka, and he's drunk, and he's about out of his mind, and he broke in somebody's house, and he just really, and laid down with sleep <laughs> on the couch, and they caught him. They got him. Uh, one one uh, woman, woman got stopped for driving drunk, and the guy cop got her out, and he said, all right, you walk that straight line. She's like this, you know, like this. And he said, walk that straight line. She said, I can't, officer, I've been drinking, you know, you know. And that that's that's kind of people that's kind of people um, you know that that we're having to deal with. One guy walked into a store and was going to rob it. It's like a hardware store, and he said, "I want all your money." And they said, "Well, we don't have any. The manager's not here yet." And he said, "Well, what time he be here?" He said that's why. And he said, "Well, here here's my number. Tell, call me when the manager comes in." Okay. <laughs> now, after he comes back and robs them, cops come and say, well, here's his number right here, you know. He, he left it. Now, that sounds, to, to me and you, that sounds, golly, why can't people think? But if you're not careful, as a Christian, you'll start wobbling in your thinking. Like what I said a minute ago about uh, abortion. You know, some people would absolutely have a fit when I say that because their mind is warped. By the world and its philosophy. All I'm trying to do is save lives. That's all. I don't think you ought to kill people. I don't think you ought to kill nobody. Murder's wrong. Amen? And, and so don't get mad at me. I ain't never killed nobody. Uh, it, it, we, need a, we need a camp meeting that'll, that'll straighten out our heads. That'll make us think right and think scripturally. Think scripturally. Number two, we need a camp meeting that'll saturate our hearts. That'll saturate our heart. Uh, you know, if, if God, if it don't happen down in your heart, it ain't no good. Uh, you can look right. You can act right. Most of y'all know how you're supposed to act at church. Most of y'all know how you, well, some of you ladies don't, how you're supposed to dress at church. Uh, most of you know how uh, you're supposed to behave and all of that. But, but you don't, it, it, that, that means nothing if God don't do something down in your heart. If God don't do something down your heart. So you know what I want us to pray for? Let's pray for a camp meeting that will saturate our hearts. Boy, you know what? If a person really gets their heart right, you don't have to worry about them too much. Buddy, when you get your heart right, everything's ain't wrong. I mean, you just, Lord have mercy. It's like when you get that light on in here, you can see dust, you know, like that. You can see that. You couldn't see it when it's dark. And when that light comes, like me up here talking, I'm shining light on y'all on your heart and that that makes you think oh my goodness i didn't know this was wrong i didn't know that was wrong so the light light makes that happen and so that's that's what kind that's what kind of new you know, uh uh pride just pride plain old pride you know it's sin to be proud and think people think they're better than other people you've heard me say this a hundred times there ain't nobody no better than nobody else amen, amen. nobody there ain't nobody god loves more than he loves anybody else Listen, the Lord loves that little bus kid. Uh, one, of, one of our bus kids just, just told me a few minutes ago, not in here right now, stopped me back there, tore all the pieces about that high. And I've been over and talked to him like that. He said, will you pray for my dad? He didn't show up in court and they put him in jail. His dad's in jail right now tonight. And he's back there in jail, worried about his dad. Worried about his dad. Can you imagine being eight, nine, however old he is, laying down the night and know that your daddy's in jail? No mom in the home. I don't know who's staying with. And then we got them girls right over yonder, Moses and them. Uh, Miriam must be back yonder, right? She's, oh, she's left. Miriam, wake up. There she is. Uh, uh, there's Miriam. She rose from the dead just then. And uh, them, them girls, mother passed away. They stay at home. Barbie girl's mom's keeping them, all that. Listen, the Lord cares just as much about them as he does some big hotshot evangelist coming in, you know, in a jet plane and everybody rolls out. Really, he does. Really, he does. Pride goes before destruction. The worst thing a person can ever do is think I'm better than other people. And you watch people. You mark it down. People are oh, like, I'm up here and rest y'all down there. You watch, buddy. They're headed for a fall. Pride goes before destruction. They'll bite the dust. I remember old Muhammad Ali, he used to go around getting up, I'm going to fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. And he said, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. Nobody can be. I'm the greatest. Have you heard him talk lately? He don't like me. I'm not glad about that. His mind's gone. 
You know what? You start thinking you're hot snot. Lord, show you, you're just a cold booger. That's right. That's right. Amen. Pride. A man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Covetous. Being covetous. Being just, you know, they're met they never satisfied. They're always wanting this, wanting that, wanting this, wanting that. So people are miserable because they look on TV and they see all them people and how pretty they are and how good looking they are and all them clothes. You know how many people they have to go through to find 10 pretty people put on TV? 50 million. Somebody said, the Lord sure must look up, love ugly people because he sure made a lot of them, didn't he? That gets most of us. Uh, and, and so it's not right. That's not right to, think, to want something you don't have. You know, your best bet is to be thankful for what God's give you and work hard and be honest and try to help somebody else. Amen. Don't complain. Well, I know this, and how come I can't have that? And I want a nicer car, and I want a nicer house, and I want this, and my husband, and you need to make more money, and we need to do, we need to, you, you just need to ask the Lord to forgive you and say, thank the Lord for what I've got. Amen. God's been good to us. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Great gain. A real camp meeting will do more for you in one hour or one day than all kinds of counseling, all kinds of reading books. Listen, if you're, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but um, uh, if, if you're having marriage problems, if you're, if you're cold, if your heart's backslid and cold, look, y'all, um, even the bus, the bus ministry, the bus, you know, uh, our bus workers, sometimes you go through ups and downs like everybody else. You get real discouraged. Sometimes you're like, boy, I can't wait till Saturday. I'm going to hit 15 new doors. I'm going to get new kids. There. And then somebody think, oh, I've done this long enough. I think I'm going to step aside. Uh, now, when you start thinking like that, you better remember, you better remember that ain't the Lord putting that in your heart. No, sir. It ain't. Lord, don't tell you to quit unless he's advancing you on up to something else and a, a better ministry. So a good camp meeting will give you a fresh burden for your bus ministry, fresh burden for your Sunday school class. You won't just up Saturday night, come home, and try to throw something together right quick and pawn off on everybody. You'll spend time. That's what kind of camp meeting we need. Amen. Boy, wouldn't that be something. So you see a camp meeting that would just get us all on fire like that. I thought about uh, little Valerie years ago. Y'all don't remember this little girl. She's 12 years old. She's still over in the old building when the church first started. And uh, she rode one of the buses and come to church and got saved. And there was a bad flu that year. Uh, it, it was really bad. And Valerie, I think, got the flu or something and passed away. 12 years old. And he's on the front page of the paper. The, as when everybody had newspapers. Somebody brought to church and said, look, Brother Danny, that girl came to our church and got saved. 12 years old. I don't remember who her bus worker was, but I'm telling you, brother, Valerie's going to be in heaven when they get there and hug their neck. Buddy, it'll be a hallelujah time. That, the camp meeting will get our eyes off this world and our problems and our own burdens, and we all got them, and put them on things above. In other words, you can sort of live with your head above water. Uh, we've all heard all, all the terrible stories of the people who were, who were drowned. And, and some, some people saw their loved ones go down that Russian river. I don't, I, I've seen so many videos people sent me, and I didn't even watch them all. People send them to me all day long. And I don't even have time to watch all them things. That's all you do if, you, if, if that's, I ain't going to watch maybe one out of ten. But um, those, that water, when you got down on top of the mountain where Rod and Roxanne lived, not that bad. If you're on top of the mountain, you don't get all that. Further you live down the valley, that's where it hit. And I, did anybody else notice it seemed like, it seemed like that it was flooded, 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 and then just all of a sudden, Friday morning, it went, I mean, it come down through there like a, like a wall, like something busted or a dam broke or something. It, it really fast, and it took out everything in its path. There's people up there in Old Fort, just up 20 miles up the road here from Marion on up. It's a different world, buddy. Completely different. And um, I, I can't imagine going down in water. Uh, that'd be awful. And that's the way it is spiritually. Spiritually, a lot of people are drowning. And you need to count me more than put your head back up there and say, whew, whew, got my head above water. I can breathe. I can breathe spiritually. And I can enjoy being saved. That's the kind of count meeting we need to have. So, straighten out our heads. 
Saturate our hearts. Number three, sanctify our habits. Sanctify our habits. If you got bad, dirty habits, you watch the dirty movies, don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault you got a dirty mind. Get it right. Get your heart right, bud. Get your heart right. Get your heart right, lady. Get your heart right, men. Used to just old dirty men. Now you got a bunch of old dirty women. That's right. Amen. Amen. Preach it, Brother Danny. That's right. Listen, it'll clean up your lifestyle. And you say, well, everybody doesn't. No, everybody don't, neither. Everybody don't. Everybody don't, and you shouldn't. It'll clean up your lifestyle. Uh, you'll, you'll get something you Ajax won't wash off. All you teenagers here tonight, you have cell phones. You better make sure you don't watch the trash. It ain't funny. It ain't funny, and it ain't right. And you're putting poison in yourself, man. You're putting, and, and there's a payday for that. There's a reaping now. You see, like if a boy, if he watches all kind of pornography and everything, he won't never be able to have a right kind of a marriage. Because no matter what, who he marries, she can't live up to what them old whores on there do. And no matter what kind of man he is, he can't live up. I, I'm, I'm speaking Bible language for you that was shocked at that. Shows you don't read your Bible. Uh, uh, listen, that's right. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm just teaching tonight. You better be glad I ain't preaching. I'm tempted. Uh, and I know some of y'all, you know, you might be in shock, but you got to hear it sometime. I might as be the one to get it to you. Look, y'all, it'll kids watching pornography will mess up your marriage. Because you or them perverts you watching is not real. It's not real. That's not reality. It's not reality. That's a devil trying to pervert your mind to make you go from one to the other to the other to the other to the other the rest of your life. Be a whoremonger. That's right. Uh, the internet is the worst thing for it. There's hundreds of thousands, they say. I've never seen one. They say there's hundreds of thousands of child pornography sites on the internet. That's what they say. Hundreds of thousands. You could see 10 new ones a day for the rest of your life and never see them all. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. That we need, a, we need a count meeting that'll sanctify our habits. Put it this way. If you're married... Your husband or wife ought to be able to, any day of the week, to walk up and say, hey, can I see your phone a minute? And you just hand it to them and look. Right? No. None of your business. Uh, try and hide some. Your parents should be able to look at your phone, and they should, and tell what you've been looking at. Amen. Preach it. I know you get mad at me, but it ain't my fault you're some kind of perv. Don't get mad at me. Look, look, y'all. If, if you ain't trying to hide it, if you're trying to hide it, there's something wrong with you. Okay. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right, Brother Dan. That's the kind of camp meeting I want to have. I want to kind of brother, clean our life up when we're not in here. When we're, when we're at home. I understand the world's wicked. I understand nobody's perfect. I understand the devil puts thoughts in their mind. He does everybody. I understand that. I'm talking about willfully wallowing and living in sin and just deliberately saying, I don't care. I, that, listen, we need one that'll straighten us up. Sanctify our habits. Um, uh, you know, then we need one finally that'll satisfy our homes. Our homes. Husbands and wives. How sad this is. You know, a child is bent, is bent one way or the other by what they see and hear at home. Recently, there's a, a very famous preacher in America. He's, he's famous for all the wrong reasons, though, usually, uh, being so controversial. And four of his adult children have come out against him. Now, some of y'all probably know, uh, understand, and and uh, saying all of you would be a hypocrite and he beat them and all that kind of stuff. Now, I, if it was one kid, I'd say, well, that's probably just a brat wanting their way. If it's two kids, I'd probably say, well, ah, he just probably wanted it. Oh, they were trying to make his dad. But four, uh, I, you know, you know, uh, look, your kids, when they grow up and they say, how was home? They'll look back and they'll say, look, my home wasn't perfect, but my daddy always took us to church and my mama always prayed with us and my... Don't don't live so that your kids, when they grow up, will say, she's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. She's a witch. Don't live like that. Don't live like that. My kids, I got kids in here tonight, and they all know I'm not perfect, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, 
If any one of them's ever seen me do something wrong, I repented to the Lord and asked them to forgive me too. If, if you want your kids to repent, we ought to repent. If you want your kids to act right, we ought to act right. Because your kids are a reflection uh, of you. And that's, that's, that's sad. You know, uh, a wife, if you, are, if you are disrespectful to your husband and overriding him, constantly overruling and overriding your husband and just giving him, you know what, until he finally gives in, or he just shuts up and lets you have your way, you'll answer to God for that. If you're a man and you're being cruel to your family, your wife or kid, you'll answer to God for that. Are you being selfish? That's right. We are. We will, men. We will. We need a camp meet. Listen, I've seen people come to the altar and their marriage is all to pieces and get up and hug necks and go home. God do more here in five minutes at this altar in an old-fashioned Holy Ghost service than, than weeks and months of, of talking to a counselor. I'm not against counseling. I'm telling you that we need a camp meeting. That's what camp meeting can do. Change us. I want to do something down in my heart. My wife and my kids here tonight. You know, you've heard about the, the, the boy, the guy, I always think about the crazy story. The guy's out and he's, he played golf every, every Monday morning, come hell or high water, no pun intended. And he, he played golf every Monday. And uh, one Monday morning, he's out on the golf course. And he's out there like this, him and his buddy. And about that time, a funeral procession come up the road. And he just stopped and backed off, took his hat off and went like this. And his buddy said, wow, man, that was, that was very, I'm impressed. That was very respectful of you. He said, well, we was married 25 years. <laughs> Now, some of you be in life, but that's just about the way you are. You're going to get what you want and do what you want, no matter how much your family has to wait or suffer. It's going to be your way or else. That ain't right, man. Man, he's the head of the house. You don't have to have your way all the time. You know, sometimes she's right. She may be right more than you are sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'll show you in the Bible where a man been better off if he listened to her. You better say amen, ladies. You're next. Derek says, cut it off. Okay. I seen a couple doing that to you Sunday morning when you was up. Huh? Well, you know, you know what you should do? Give in once in a while. I know you're going to say I do. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, did y'all hear that? Right here in the house of God. And a nice. <laughs> I'd be afraid the roof would fall in on me. He gives in all the time. We got it on video. <laughs> He's, no, I'm just kidding with you. Uh, now, ladies, shall we talk to you? Satisfy our homes, y'all. Amen? Really, y'all? You're If you dictate to him all the time, if you're hateful till you get your way, if the only time you're nice is when you're wanting something. I mean... Come on, sister. Thank you. Uh, one lady said amen, and all the men scared too. <laughs> Don't you say that I'll get you home while I'll rain your neck. But seriously, seriously, look, you're married, you're stuck, right? You're stuck together. You're one flesh. You can be miserable and stuck, or work it out and be stuck. Take your pick. Because a divorce ain't supposed to be in our the vocabulary. Amen. Sometimes it happens. If it happens, you can't help it. There ain't nothing you can do about it. But it should never be in our vocabulary. So we say, look, we're in this thing. We might as well learn how to get along. And that means giving in on both sides. Both sides giving in and being nice. Amen? That's the kind of camp meeting I'd like for us to have. I'd like to have, let's have a camp meeting so that the following next week when we meet again, Everybody's going to say, praise God, Brother Danny. It's been different at my house ever since camp meeting. My kids have been more respectful. My mom and daddy's been nicer to me. Mama's been nicer to daddy. Daddy's been better to us. I'd like to have a camp meeting that'll make it think straight, act right, talk right, live right, do, do what the right thing is. I really, I really, really would. I, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to have a camp meeting that'll make us straighten up, brother, and do what, what the right thing is. So let's, the only way we're going to have that is pray. And I'm going to, and I'm going to ask you to. But everybody in here, I want you to say, Lord, you do whatever you want to do in my life at the camp meeting. 
and mean it. Can we do that? Let's bow our head. Come on, Kevin. Let's bow our head for a little word of prayer. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed now. It's important. You know, bow your head, close your eyes. She's playing softly. Now you ask yourself this question in your, on your own mind, in your own heart. Lord, whatever I've been doing wrong, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry, and I want you to forgive me. Right now, I ask you to forgive me, Jesus. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, Father. Lord, God, have mercy on me, we pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help. Lord, help me to live right. Help me to do right. I pray for all the folks watching from home, Lord, that they'd pray that same prayer. And I pray for an old-fashioned, old-time, Holy Ghost, camp me that would stir us, Lord, send us away from here to live for you and serve you all the days of our life. Oh, God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. God, do what ought to be done in our hearts, in our homes, in our houses, in our church. God, let Shining Light Baptist Church experience a real, old-time, old-fashioned camp meeting. God, please send the fire down, Lord. Bless all the preachers that preach. Uh, Brother Frankie and Barry Spears and Cody Zorn and the Edwards family and Brother Ted Tuggle and Brother Gene and uh, all the all the preachers coming in. Brother, Brother Ronnie and all the preachers coming in. I pray you bless them. Have you in our hearts tonight, Lord. God, please, Lord. Lord, uh, you said this kind don't come forth but by nothing but by prayer and fasting. I pray, God, that we pray. I pray that we fast. I pray, God, that we put you first, honor you, and do what's right. Have you a Lord. Have you a in every heart. Do what ought to be done. God will thank you and praise you for it. But we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. God, I pray especially for all these young people here tonight that are struggling. Lord, I know they're fighting a battle. I know the devil every day is working for their mind and their heart. I pray he won't be able to get it. God do what ought to be done in their life. Send a great revival, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Alrighty. All right, you can talk.